Hello, I'm Pauline Larson, and this is Pinky. Hi, hi. Yeah. You excited to be here? Yeah, I like being here. Wish I could see all the kids. Let me look. Oh, okay. Can't see anybody. No, can't. But they're out there, right? Yeah. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about Christmas. Oh, I love Christmas. I'm excited. You expecting some gifts? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you want? A dinosaur. You want a dinosaur? It's kind of, yeah. I don't like dinosaurs. You wouldn't like them in real life if they walked around when you were alive. They're kind of big. But they're kind of cool, too, I have to admit. Well, this Christmas is about Jesus. And we celebrate Jesus this Christmas. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are so busy buying gifts and saying, and they don't say Merry Christmas, they say Happy Holidays. No, it's Merry Christmas, although you could say Happy Holy Days, but the point being, Jesus is the reason for the season. That's our PowerPoint, too. Yeah. All right. You ready to say the memory verse? Mm hmm All right. Let's do it. Okay. It's a long one. Yeah. You ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Wow. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome they did that for us. And he came as a, and was a baby. Can you imagine Mary raising uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords? And she's about 14 years old and she had that baby. Wow, that's amazing. All right, let's go on to our PowerPoint, which is Jesus' reason for the season. He is. Hello, Jesus. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. He is awesome. Yes, he is. Oh, well. I'll tell you something neat about Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Hebrews 13.8. And you know what? What he did then, he'll do today. Like all this COVID stuff. Jesus paid the price for healing. So why are people so scared? Good question. They can just get healed. That's right. Mm, what do they have to do? Just leave God? That's right. Leave Jesus. And I'll tell you what, by his stripes, we were healed. Those stripes on his back when he was crucified... Paid the price for every disease. Well, they didn't know about COVID then. No, they didn't. But Jesus knew, paid the price, and he knew what was coming. He knew from the foundation of the world, us, and he knew exactly what was going to come, and he paid the price for all of it. Everything's covered under the blood of Jesus. And we're going to talk about his blood, because that's a very important reason for why he was born as a baby. Really? Yeah. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is the four things we need to learn about God. You want to tell us what the first one is? Mm, God loves me. That's right. God loves me. He loves you. He loves you. So I don't know. I don't feel like anybody loves me. God loves you. You know what? You're his favorite son or daughter, depending if you're a boy or a girl. And there is only boy or girl, despite what other people may say. You're either male or female. If you have a question, go to the bathroom, check yourself out. Okay, secondly, what is the second thing? Mm, I have sinned. I don't like that. No. When you love Jesus, you don't want to do things he wouldn't like. No. You want to please Jesus, don't you? Mm. All right, what's number three? Jesus died to me. So why do we celebrate his birth? Well, because he was born of a virgin. Yeah. But his blood came from the Father. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But that made him so he was free of sin. And he could pay the price for us. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah. Wow is right. All right. What's number four? Mm hmm. I must decide to live for him. I do. You live for him? Mm-hmm. What do you do? I pray. What else do you do? I tell people to Jesus. Good. And what else do you do? I go to church. Well, that's good. And I encourage all of you, you know, 
Read the Bible. Get yourself a Bible and read it. Yeah, you've got it on your phones and everything. I got it on mine too. But you know, when you open it and you read it and you can thumb thumb through it, you can look things up, you just get more out of it. And the thing is, it's our instruction manual for life. The Word of God can speak to you. You can read a page of it and it just jumps out of the page. Yeah, it does. It really does. The, the Bible says that the Word of God is quick and powerful, and, or that word powerful could mean alive. The book's alive, you say. Yeah, it's amazing. It's the only book that's alive because God sent it. It's a love letter from him to you. Well, I think it's time to say goodbye. You want to say goodbye? Bye. Okay, let's go ahead and take you down here. Whoa. Let me put you, put you under here. All right. All right. Now, we're going to talk about the birth of the Savior. And here we have a picture. Joseph uh, believes the angel, and he will read a little bit of this. And I'm reading out of the New Living Bible because it reads, and it's kind of kid-friendly. There are other translations. It says in uh, Matthew 1, and verse 18, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was pregnant, still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man, did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived of the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, and he did as the angel of the Lord uh, commanded and took Mary as his wife, and it said he did not have sexual relationship with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. All right, now I'm going to go over to Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And I'm going to talk about, let's say here, here he is. They, there was no room in the inn when they went. And, you know, here they were, you know, uh, uh, pretty amazing if you think about it. <laughs> They're in a stable after she'd ridden on a donkey for about nine miles. That must not have been fun, let's face it. And so anyway, so here she is with her baby. Can you imagine that? That little baby was to be, is the king of kings and lord of lords. And he was fully human. And yet he was God. But Jesus, he laid aside his deity. The son laid aside his deity and became born. And he, came, he became our savior. But he had to grow up. You know, he had to learn, wear diapers and, and learn things in, in school. And he had to grow up like everybody else. But he was our example of how to live. It's amazing, isn't it? All right. Now. The night, that night, this is Luke 1, 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by the sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to uh, Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. 
after seeing him, the shepherds were over, told everyone what had happened and what the angel had told them about the child. Isn't that amazing? And then, of course, we know the wise men came. And here's a picture of them, too, with all the, the you know, the angels with all the, um, the shepherds must have just been so frightened with all of a sudden. Can you imagine just being there with a nice starry night and all of a sudden you're seeing all this? It's like, wow. That must have been something. But anyway, they decided to go and see the baby. And, of course, they went over, and here they are. They're looking at Mary and Joseph and the baby. Well, after this, about two, hour, two years later, I think that they must have been in the house or whatever, um, <clears throat> the um, wise men, they saw the star, and they went to see, and they, and, and they took gold and frankincense and myrrh, and then, of course, Herod wanted to know about um, the ba you know, baby. And, of course, he wanted to kill the baby because of the prophecies and talked about his kingdom. And, you know, they had to escape to go to Egypt. But anyway, and, you know, they say there were three kings. No, there weren't three kings. There were probably a lot more. And, you know... Um, I guess it's because of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They thought one brought one, one brought another, and but that's not how it was. And so uh, it's amazing. In fact, this December on the 21st, I'm told the way the planets will line will almost look like the Christmas star. So anyway, um, every year we celebrate Christmas and we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I tell you what, it's just. Amazing what God did, sending his son. And, you know, what's, what's even more amazing is that he ended up in a stable. I mean, if we were trying to orchestrate that, we wouldn't have the king of kings and the Messiah being born in a stable. We'd have him in a mansion or in the palace. But that's our God. He came and you can imagine all the angels stepping over all the cow patties to say, is this the Messiah? <laughs> so... Next we have the candy cane. Candy cane, a lot of people eat candy canes at Christmas time, and they're good. But the person who created it actually did it as a way to present the gospel. Um, what do we know about candy canes? Well, they're sh normally they're shaped like a shepherd's crook, which Jesus is. He is the chief shepherd, and he is our shepherd. And I think about him speaking to the shepherds too. And then the next thing we notice is the red for this, the red, and we think that uh, the blood of Jesus, and that's what made the difference with him, was the blood, and his blood being shed for us so that we could have remission of all sins, the blood of Jesus, and it was by his stripes. You notice they are kind of like layer like stripes that he paid the price for our sickness and. <coughs> He redeemed us from the curse of the law, and the curse, of course, is poverty and death and sickness. And then the white was the purity, you know, pureness. We think about pureness. And then you think about a candy cane, and you realize that it's usually made out of a kind of a hard type of candy. And it's, uh, we think he's rock of salvation. Well, you know, there are all kinds of symbolism in there. Of course, when you eat it, you break it. And, of course, his body was broken for us. And it's, he became... You know, we laid down his deity, and he didn't have to do that so that we could have life. And so I thought it was really neat that they came up with this at Christmas time, the candy canes, very symbolic. All right, now, going back to the birth, can you imagine? Here's Mary. She was probably about 12, 14 years old. Some of you kids think, oh, I can't do much of anything. She was 12 or 14 years old of age when she got pregnant. And God entrusted her with the Messiah to be the mother and to raise him. You know, he must have seen in something in her that was wonderful. And we think one person can't make a difference. She did. And Joseph, Joseph could have put her away if he had listened to the angel. And he was actually of the lineage for a king. And so um, it's interesting when you see that. And then there's this little baby. He was fully human, and yet he was fully Lord, too. He was king of kings. And we see these shepherds, and they're coming to look and see this baby and to see such a sight, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And, um, you know, that's normally what you dry off lambs and things with. And Anyway, when they're born, that is. 
And here we see a picture of these are blood cells flowing through a vein. And, you know, when you go to the doctor, sometimes they'll check what your, your blood count is. And they want to know the proportion of blood to white, you know, red blood cells to white and platelets and things. But that's in, back in the Old Testament, talks about that sin is carried through the blood. That's why when Adam and Eve blew it in the garden in Genesis, all of mankind at that point was cursed because they disobeyed God by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, sin had come into the whole human line. And every baby was born because they had the same blood. So what made a difference with Jesus? Well, that's why we celebrate his birth, because the blood comes through the Father. And because of the blood of Jesus, you know, we can, uh, he was able to uh, present a new con um, covenant and he was able to pay the price to buy us back so that we, when we die, we can go to heaven and be with him. Before that, we could not. There's a real heaven and a real hell. And you do not want to go to hell. I know as people say that to people. And, but they really don't want anybody to go to hell. Hell's a terrible place. And it's forever. And so uh, Jesus made a way so that we don't have to do that. We're free from that. Okay, we're going to go ahead in a few minutes here, and we're going to talk about the story about a lamb. I used to raise 4-H sheep, and I don't know if anybody watching this does, but, you know, say, say sheep are really dumb. I didn't really find that they were so much. I used to show them, take them to shows and things, and I found you could teach them to a certain point, and, and they had little personalities. And so, and Jesus is the Lamb of God, and as a flock of people, we're referred to as sheep, you know, and I always thought that's kind of insulting, but it's really not. And if you've ever known sheep, they really are, they're pretty cool little animals. And so I know those people don't think that, but they really are. Anyway, we're going to go on with our story now, and we're going to talk about, um, here, this is Cherie, and that's her lamb, Lily. And the very first lamb I ever had, she was born on Easter. And I wasn't a believer then, but I knew about Easter Lily, so I called her Lily. And anyway, we're, this little lamb's name is Lily, too. And she just, she was a real challenge for her mother. Her mother had had several lambs before. But Lily was, a, she was always asking questions and always wandering off and doing things that her mom didn't expect. And as a result, kind of made things challenging, to say the least. Like she would take off, she'd graze off away. And she was always afraid a wolf or something would get the, the lamb and, and, you know, she'd go th and do things like she went to the shepherd. And she would go try to talk to the shepherd. Well, the shepherd didn't know what she was saying. And so she would talk to him. And I'm sure she must have thought, those humans really aren't very smart. And he probably thought, those sheep aren't very smart. But they just couldn't communicate. And so she would wander off, she would explore, and she had endless questions, and she was, she really was a smart little sheep, but she just, you know, that's kind of dangerous when you're a lamb, because there's, there's predators out there that want to eat you, you know, and it'd be easy to get lost. But anyway, I guess God was really watching over her. Speaking of watching over her, all of a sudden, one night, the sky just filled with the glory of God, and the angel and they were angels were saying that in Bethlehem that the Messiah had been born, the Savior had been born, and they were saying, "Don't be afraid." And of course, I'm sure the the sheep were afraid, and certainly the shepherds were terrified. And they were like, "Oh my gosh, what is this sight?" It was a nice night, dark sky, and then all of a sudden, here's brilliantly lit, and just with the glory of God, and and then hearing all this from these obviously angelic beings. Wow, what a night. One they'd never forget, that's for sure. And of course, that's where we get our songs like Joy to the World and things like that is from that, <coughs> excuse me, that night when the angel, <coughs> excuse me, when the angels proclaimed that Jesus had come or that the Messiah had come. And so uh, anyway, the shepherds decided that they were going to go and see this great sight. So what they decided, because they all had sheep, 
is that they would take the sheep and they would move them toward where the light was coming from, the star was coming from. And so that's what they did. <coughs> and, and they started to move them. And of course, you can't move them fast because of the lambs and stuff. You can wear them out and they had to go slowly. And so Sherry was like, I wonder where my lamb is because her, her lamb was missing from the time that the shepherds and the glory appeared, she disappeared. And she was like, I wonder if I'll find her. And here we're going to move to a new place and I wonder where she'll be. I'll never see my little lamb again, she thought. Well, I guess she prayed. I know sheep do pray, but um, not like we do. But anyway, I'm sure they talk to God in their own way. So as they were being led along, she kept asking and looking for her daughter. Didn't see him. Nobody had seen the lamb. She, she just thought, I wonder where she is. I wonder if I'll see her again. She was upset because here was this great thing that everybody was excited about, but she had lost her daughter. And that would be very difficult, wouldn't it? When you love your child and all of a sudden they're missing. It's like, this is not good. This is not good at all. So anyway, they continued to move toward the, the star, the big star that was hanging in the, in the heavens. And the shepherd stopped at one place, and, he's, and you could tell they were kind of talking to each other, and the guy was pointing further down the road, and apparently he was saying something about it. there was no room in the end, and they had to go to a stable or something. And anyway, the sheep were tired, but they continued to go on toward wherever that star was and they could see it getting brighter and brighter and they knew they were getting closer and it was like wow I wonder what this is and still Cherie had not seen her daughter and she was like oh I don't want my daughter to miss out on this wonderful sight this is terrible so they get there and she's still asking have you seen my daughter and it was like they got to the place and it was bright bright light and the glory of God and and so they moved up, and as they moved in, <clears throat> there was her daughter, tears in her eyes, and she was just, she was looking at the lamb. And so Cherie came up and looked too, and then she saw her daughter, and there were tears in her eyes, and the two of them looked at the baby. You know, what they didn't realize was that that little baby was the lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world. He came to die on a cross. He came to be a sacrificial lamb. He came and died over Passover when they would sacrifice a Passover lamb. And you know what's amazing about it is they don't have to sell, sacrifice lambs like they did or sheep in the temple like they used to do. So Jesus really kind of paid the price for man, but he also paid the price for the animals too that they didn't have to die like that. Of course, they, people eat them and stuff, and they still get, you know, they still go for meat and stuff. But here they were celebrating the Messiah. How wonderful. What a wonderful sight that must have been. And I just think about our wonderful Savior and how he paid the price for all of us and what he did for us. And at Christmas time, don't forget that. Don't just be into gifts and presents and what I'm going to give and have I done all my shopping and, and oh my gosh, am I going to have to keep worried about COVID? No, Jesus paid the price on the cross so you don't have to be sick. And while you're enjoying Christmas, remember he is the reason for the season. And you know, the best thing you can do while you're getting gifts is tell people about Jesus. That's the best gift you can give Jesus is that people will be saved and that when they leave this life they'll be able to go and live with him all right <clears throat> we were going to told you that we were going to tell you about how to accept jesus if you never have and that's the best gift you can give jesus if you've never accepted jesus is today make that today let me ask you this question if you died today do you know if you go to heaven you say well i'm a pretty good person that doesn't cut it it's knowing jesus and accept him as your lord and savior and the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. And that includes everybody. There was no exceptions. And then it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
And that's Romans 6, 23. And the thing is, we all needed a Savior. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, and it talks about if we will believe in our heart and say with our mouth, God raised Jesus from the dead, we can be saved. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're a whosoever, right? Well, of course you are. So, guess what? You can be saved. So, um, this is this is your opportunity. This is what a way you can give the greatest gift of all, and that is your life to Jesus. Nothing would please him more than to know that you're going to spend eternity with him. So, if you're ready to do this, then repeat this after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe God raised you from the dead. I believe it with my heart, and I'm saying it with my mouth. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, I can tell you as a minister of the gospel, <clears throat> I can tell you as a minister of the gospel that your sins are forgiven. Isn't that wonderful to realize that? I'll tell you what. You start with a clean slate. People may not forgive you or forget things, but God does. And then once you accepted him, just imagine you giving Jesus a big hug. Because when you leave this earth, you will see him. And tell other people about Jesus. Now get yourself a Bible, read the book, get hooked on the book, get yourself in a good church, and um, you know, talk to God. Just talk to him. He's real. Spend time with him. He's awesome. Well, we're out of time, so have a Merry Christmas. God bless. We love you. Jesus loves you.